reading to you from Luke and with the 21st verse and the 46th verse, 20, 21st chapter, 46th verse. Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and love respectful greetings in the marketplaces and chief seats in the synagogues and places of honor at banquets who devour widows' houses and for appearance's sake offer long prayers, these will receive greater condemnation. Good evening, my dear listening friends. Again, this is Evangelist Cecil Moe. And as you know, I'm a converted alcoholic. Gave my heart to Christ over 52 years ago in a pastor's home in Seattle, Washington. One later, year later, God called me to preach, and I've been sharing ever since. Tonight, I have a message for everybody who's having financial problems. Now, every senior citizen, turn your radio up, and maybe this will bless you. This message is not just for senior citizens. It's for me and my wife, okay? Kick off your slippers, sit back and relax. Pour your glass of ice to your cup of coffee. Let's see what the Lord has for us, okay? If you have your Bibles with you, turn with me to Luke, the 21st chapter and the first verse. And he looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts under the treasury. And he saw a certain poor widow putting in two small copper coins. And he said, Truly I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all of them, for they are all for they all out of their surplus put into the offering, but she, out of her poverty, put in all that she had to live on. I have labeled this, my dear friends, faith when funds are low. Well, <clears throat> getting to know a poor widow of Jerusalem, many things we don't know about her. We don't know her age. We don't know her name, appearance, or number, children, the reason for her husband's death, all we know is she was a woman of faith and very, very, very poor. She commend, Jesus commended this widow for her faith. His commendation has caused her to be remembered down through the years. The favor of Christ endures. And listen, the favor of the world passes away. But let's learn about a poor widow's faith. Now, the widow's faith took her to a place of worship, and the treasure was at the temple in Jerusalem. Some might have found excuses to stay home. Maybe their clothes were not good enough. Too many wealthy people will be there, ashamed to go when able to give a large gift. You know, friends, years and years ago, when I was the associate pastor of a church at Bellingham, Washington. I had a neat young group. They were neat. And I would take these teenagers to to uh, rest homes. And, I'd, and They'd sing and share the gospel. And they were working real hard. Well, one day this girl said to me, Preacher, you know, I know a girl out here at the lake. They're so, they're so poor they can't pay attention. She doesn't even have a pair of shoes. All she wears is flip-flops, and that's the reason she won't come to church, because she doesn't have shoes. I said, well, bless your heart, let's take four or five girls, and let's go out and visit with her. So we went out to their place, and like I say, she was so poor, and she had her flip-flops on. And we invited her to church, and the girls witnessed to her, and tried to make her as comfortable as they could. And she said, no, I, I can't come. I can't come Sunday. And this one girl said, you know, it's been so hot lately. Why don't we all wear flip-flops to church? 
And the little girl's eyes lit up. And did you know, friends, that girl came to church with her flip-flops and so did my youth group. And did you know we had the privilege of introducing that poor girl to Christ because we showed some compassion. Friends, listen, I'm telling you, if we don't have a compassionate heart, there's something with our walk with Jesus, something wrong with our walk with Jesus. I'm telling you, it's a serious situation. I know Christians that could give to people they have a super abundance of money. Don't give a dime. Don't even give a dime to the church. I wonder about them. I truly wonder about them. Now, many, many years ago, when I was also associate pastor of this church, I received a call from Seattle, Washington, and they said, uh, Cecil, could you come down and preach for us Sunday morning and Sunday night? We don't have a pastor, so we're just getting pastors all around the country. I said, I'd be glad to come down. So my wife and I went down there on a Saturday, Sunday morning, and uh, we got the church. And, and uh, that morning I preached on John 3.16. Now, let me tell you what happened. This woman, or this girl, I should say, was sitting about sixth or seventh row from the front of the church. And I kept noticing, I don't know why I noticed her, but she was about 10 years old, and she had her hand held over her dress. I couldn't understand that. Well, anyway, during the invitation, no, before I'm getting ahead of myself, after the service was over, this lady came up to me and said, you know, I don't like the way you preach. Well, I said, that's a, probably a lot of people say that, but they're not as bold as you are. She said, you talked about knowing you were going to heaven. And she said, I've taught Sunday school, and I don't know I'm going to heaven. She said, why don't you and your wife come over to see me uh, this afternoon? I said, I'd be more than happy to go over there. So we went over there. And she was rocking in that rocking chair about 100 miles a minute. She was 69 years old. And I had my wife and I shared with this dear lady, Jesus. Finally, she said, well, you're right then. The Bible does say that you may know that you're passing death in life. And that dear lady knelt with my wife and I and opened her heart to Christ. Then she said, Cecil, I've got to tell you something that you're not going to believe. I don't go to that church. Never have been to that church. Last night, she said, it was raining like you know how it rains in Seattle. At about 10 o'clock, there was, and she lived in a tough part of town, and there was a knock on her door at 10 o'clock. Well, she said, I went to the curtain, I went to the door and pulled the curtain back, and here was a little girl standing out there, her hair was over her face, and I thought, my stars in the morning. I opened the door, and I said, honey, can I help you? And she said, uh, ma'am, we've got a new preacher coming to church tomorrow, and we'd li I'd like to invite you to come hear him. And she said, well, I guess I can do that, and shut the door. And she said, my, this is an angel unawares. And so she came to church. Now get this. And she said that little girl brought her to church. I said, well, look at I want you to introduce me to that girl when we get to church. Well, we got busy, and she didn't give me a chance to introduce her. Anyway, uh, during the invitation, this lady came forward to make a profession of faith. And I said to her, ma'am, is that little girl here? She said, yes, that little girl sitting in the sixth row with her hand over her, on her lap, both hands. And so I said, young lady, could you come up here and stand beside this dear lady who gave her cry, a heart to Christ because of you, because you you were concerned and you went out in a rainstorm at 10 o'clock and invited her. Listen, friends, that girl came forward and there was a great big hole in her dress and that's why she had her hands on her lap all the time. So I had her stand sideways so the people couldn't see the hole. And friends, I want you to know, uh, after the service, and we went back to, to Bellingham, I couldn't get that little girl off my mind. And I began to tell people about her. I said, here's a little girl, 10 years old. Well, I found out her parents, after she accepted Christ, her parents 
threw her out, said, we don't want you here. You're crazy. You're crazy. Because she believed in Jesus. Well, there was a wealthy lady in that church. And she took that little girl under her wing. And she went to the parents and asked her if they would let her adopt that little girl who they said was crazy. They said, good, get her out of my house. They took that little girl down. She had club feet, too, but I forgot to tell you that she had club feet. That woman had her operated on, and her feet was really fine. And then I found out later that that little girl became one of the best soul winners that church ever had. A poor little girl who loved Jesus enough to go out in a rainstorm and witness and invite people to church. It made me cringe thinking all the times I could have went out and invited people to church, but I didn't do it. Maybe you're one of them tonight. Say, oh, Cecil, boy, you're right. I've, I've never been that concerned. Well, friends, we better get concerned because we're living in the last days. <clears throat> well, this widow, she knew she didn't have pretty clothes, and uh, she was probably ashamed to go when unable to give a large gift. She worked hard all week. Maybe she was too tired to go. Rich members hadn't contributed her needs. She was poor but rich in faith. Her shortage of funds didn't keep her from the temple. Verse 2, it says, And he saw a certain poor widow putting in two small copper coins. Many would have thought they couldn't afford to give. Every penny was needed for living. Now let the wealthy do the giving. She considered giving an act of worship. Christians, giving has spiritual significance. She could give much, but she couldn't keep from giving. She gave two mites, two small copper toys, and that's all she had. Her gift must have seemed insignificant to the rest. Boy, but it was an important gift to the widow. She wanted to do something for the Lord. The widow's faith caused her to give all she had in verse 4. And while some were talking about the temple, that is, was adorned with beautiful stones and uh, votive gifts, she said, All these things which you are looking at the day will come in which there will not be left one stone upon, none, upon another which was to be torn down. That wasn't the scripture I wanted to read, but I read it anyway, and just go along with me. Well, she saw this as a, Jesus saw this as the largest gift of the day. He said she gave more than the rest. God measures our gifts by our ability to give. The others gave part of their wealth. The widow held back nothing. Listen, imagine the inward struggle about this gift. She would have nothing left. Faith still moved her to give it all. Faith giving is revealed by what we keep. You know, friends, I've told this story before, but it's a true story, and I'll tell you again. Uh, after I joined the church, after I got saved and I joined the church, we had a pastor's uh, class for baby Christians, new Christians. And my wife and I was in there. And every Sunday night, we would study what, why we were baptized, why we take the Lord's Supper and, and all this and that. And this particular night, it was on tithing. Well, now, every Sunday, when the, pa when the plate was passed, I would reach in my pocket and proudly pull out that $1 bill and put it in there. Well, I'm helping pay the pastor. I'm helping send missionaries overseas. I was so proud. But... Boy, that pastor dropped a bomb on me. He said we're to give 10% of all we have and more. Boy, I said, I can't do that. I cannot do that. Well, listen, faith giving is revealed by what we keep. Years ago, there was a, uh, a church somewhere in Texas was having a mission uh, rally and raising some funds for uh, missionaries overseas. And the preacher preached on this widow's might. 
And when the offering tray came around, this little girl put a little Raggedy Ann doll in the offering tray. After the service, one of the deacons came up and said, Here, I want to give this back to you. Oh, no, she said, I don't want to. She said, the pastor said that God wants us to give the best we have. And that's all I've got. Oh, friends, listen. They took in thousands of dollars that night because of a little girl who truly, truly believed that God wanted her to give that little doll. You know, there's a message on a gravestone in England. Listen to this. What I spent, I had. What I saved, I lost. What I gave, I have. Friends, God is the great giver. He gave his son. Listen, I've told you this story too, but it is so important. I was carpentering in Portland, Oregon. With about eight or nine carpenters, we built a bunch of houses in there. And at lunch, we'd go out and sit in the shade and have lunch together. And one of the guys, uh, the, the foreman said to me, Hey, Mo, I hear you're a preacher. And I said, That's correct. He said, Do you know what I believe? I said, No, what do you believe? He said, I believe men come from monkeys. I said, In your particular case, I wouldn't doubt it. Did you know he fired me that day? I mean, I got my pink slip. And all the carpenters said, Cecil, you were just standing up for what you believe. You, They shouldn't have done that. I said, That's okay. And I was making about $400 a week. Now, get this. My next job was $150 a month, emptying bedpans in a rest home and bringing meals to the night crew. That was quite a letdown, let me tell you. Well, I tell you, dear friends, I witnessed those dear old people. I loved them. In fact, three of them would come. My deacon would bring three of those ladies in the rest home to my church. And I remember one night, this one little old lady, she's about 70-some years old, she said, Preacher, I'm hungry. I said, What do you mean? Didn't they feed you at the home tonight? She said, Yeah, but I couldn't eat it. I said, What did they feed you? said, It was cabbage and milk cook cabbage and milk well you know milk a cabbage is not good for elderly people and so the next morning i went to the 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 lady that was in charge and she was a quote quote christian and i told her that i was very unhappy that they fed them just nothing but milk and and cabbage cooked and she got on her high horse, she told me off, said, you don't act much like a preacher. And I said, and you don't act much like a Christian. I said, I'll tell you what, if you don't start changing the meals for those people at night, I said, I'm guaranteeing you, I'm going to the governor of Oregon and you're going to get a new job. I mean, I was furious. No excuse for that. They raised all their own food, pigs, they had their own dairy and they had everything. Well, friends, I'll tell you right now. Sometimes we have to take a stand. Well, and I came home. I, this, I worked on this job at work uh, all night, work night shift. And I'd go home and I'd be so tired and so sleepy. And one night, I, one morning I came home and I was tired. My wife said, Cecil, I don't know what happened, but uh, the company you're working for, Cooley, yeah. She said, well, they brought a whole bunch of plans over here and gave them to me and said for you to figure the contract of the siding, the labor uh, of the siding on these houses. I said, okay, so I figured them up, turned them in. I started making twelve to $1,600 a week for the same company that fired me. Romans 8, 28 is still in effect. All things do work together for the good. Now, faith receives God's good gifts and faith gives to God even when funds are low beloved you cannot outgive God he gave his son he gives eternal life to those who receive Christ listen I do not solicit funds on my ministry why well, why don't you because I don't believe I should I don't believe I should I tithe my wife and I we tithe on our social security 
No, I can't buy my way into heaven. No, I can't earn my way into heaven. No, I cannot by going to church get my way into heaven. Jesus tells us, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. Have you been born again? Oh, I'm, I'm asking you, stop just for a minute. Now think, when did you accept Jesus? When did you tell him you were sorry for your sins and invite him into your heart? Or do you believe you're going to heaven because you just belong to a Baptist church or a Presbyterian or a Catholic or whatever church it is? Beloved, you won't get into heaven by joining a church. You'll get into heaven after you accept Jesus. You should go to church. You should find a good church. You should find a good Sunday school. You should get a good study Bible. Oh, friends, listen. If you accept the Lord and don't read in your Bible, you're not going to grow. You're going to die on a vine. I lived in that book. Day and night, practically. I'd call the preacher. What does this mean? What does this mean? I tell you, it was the most exciting time in my life. It seemed like every page that I turned in that Bible, I found out that God loved me. See, I was beaten and abused for a long time by a, a mean stepmother. I know the times that I laid in the basement after she beat me, and I'd cry, and I'd cry. And I'd think, oh God, what have I done to deserve this? But I want you to know this wonderful Jesus put a forgiveness in my heart for my stepmother. I went to her home. I tried to witness her to her. I tried to lead her to Christ, but she would not. And she died in that condition. But the thing was, God put love in my heart to forgive her. Friends, listen, let me ask you again. When faith, when your faith, is, when the funds are low, or how's your faith holding up? Friends, listen, you cannot give him, but do something for somebody else. If you know some poor person that you know well, and uh, it, you know what, taking them a little pie or taking them a little bouquet of flowers. Years ago, I knew I went to an alcoholic's home, and they, they, it was a log cabin, but it was well kept and clean. His wife was a Christian. He was an alcoholic, a town drunk, and he was in bed. And I went to him, and I told him who I was and that I, too, was an alcoholic. Make a long story short, after about a half an hour, I helped him out of bed, and him and I knelt there, and he invited Christ into his heart. And you know what he told me? He said, you know, the lady across the street is a Christian. I said, how do you know? Because every day when her flower garden blooms, she brings me a fresh bouquet of flowers. What a testimony. Well, friends, well, the last thing I saw, his wife down on her knees with her arms around that dear alcoholic's neck. I saw a piece of heaven. Oh, yes, I did. Friends, let me ask you. You say, well, see, so that's all right. That's okay, but I don't believe in giving. Well, <clears throat> I'm <clears throat> asking you to check up <clears throat> and see if you truly have been born again. That's one test. There's many more. Say, if you love me, keep my commandments. <clears throat> but tonight you say I don't know Jesus I guess well why don't you tonight come to him as a little child that this is a prayer that will change your life if you repent and really mean it and invite Christ to your heart he'll change your life he'll save your soul and give you eternal life here's how the prayer goes please don't pray it unless you mean it dear precious Lord I I confess that I'm a sinner Lord I'm sorry for all the things I've done to you and to my family Tonight, Lord, I'm opening my heart and receiving you as my Lord and Savior in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, won't you get on the phone and call 303-471-8534. If you can't afford to call, call me, collect. <clears throat> I'll accept that call, please. And I don't care where you go to church. I'm only concerned where you spend eternity. Now, bow your head right now and say, Lord, I don't know where I'm going. He'll tell you. He'll let you know if you're lost. Yes, he will. You can pray that prayer anytime as long as you're alive. But after you're dead, not much hope there, according to my Bible. Well, listen, 
Give me a call if I can help you. 303-471-8534. Friends, for the past half hour, your host has been Evangelist Cecil Mo. Oh, dear friends, I hope you learned something from this. You can't outgive God. You know, He says, Give to the poor, and you lendeth unto the Lord. I've used that as my yardstick since I've been a Christian. We used to give up tons of groceries at Christmas time to needy families because of the last couple of years my health has been so we can do it. But Oh, I enjoyed that. Going into homes of people that don't even know God loves them. And you can show a witness to someone after you shared with them. Shared your loaf. God loves it. Well, until this time next Sunday night, I want you to be good to your neighbors. Stay sweet. Keep looking up for this wonderful, wonderful Jesus is coming soon. Good night and may God bless you real, real good. <laughs>